In this lab, we will be examining a technique called thin layer chromatography, and we'll be using it to basically separate out a, uh, various over-the-counter medications into their constituent uh, compounds. We'll be examining these over-the-counter medications for the presence of acetaminophen, caffeine, and aspirin. To run a TLC, we are going to spot the chemicals we want to test uh, on a particular plate that contains uh, silica or alumina gel or powder and place that in a particular solvent or mixture of solvents. As the solvents travel up the plate, they pull the spots with them. But because the different components of the spot have different solubilities, they will spread out because they travel at different rates up the plate. So to begin this process, we first need to spot the plate with uh, the materials we want to test. Um, if you were doing this lab in person, I would have you practice with a uh, practice plate and I'll show you what that looks like. This is a TLC plate. Uh, to do this experiment, we are going to spot this plate with, the, with solutions of the drugs we want to test, as well as solutions of the pure components we are checking for, namely caffeine, aspirin, and acetaminophen. Now, basically, once this plate has been spotted, we're going to put it in a solvent and as the solvent rises up the plate, it will pull those spots with it. However, the different uh, materials that are in those solutions have different solubilities in the solvent. As a result, they'll travel up the plate at different rates. And so the mixtures in our over-the-counter medications will start to spread out into their individual components. By looking at where the spots are and comparing them to the pure materials, we can figure out what's in the different over-the-counter drugs. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and spot this plate and show you oh, while I'm spotting it. Uh, if we were to do this lab uh, in person, I would probably have you practice on a little piece of a TLT plate. Uh, just so you have uh, an idea of how to handle these, uh, you kind of want to hold a TLC plate uh, like a photograph by its edges like this. Uh, you want to be careful not to bend the plate or pick it up by pushing your thumb on the silica. Uh, that flakes off the, the powder, the silica gel. And um, you can see that's generally not a good thing. So I've left a little sample here that's flaked off to show you what that looks like. You want to avoid that happening. Um, so, like I said, hold it like a photograph, but be careful not to bend it. Okay, so hold it very, very gently. When we're marking our TLC plate, we want to use it, uh, we want to do so with a pencil. A uh, pen is not a good idea for using on a TLC plate because the ink from your pen uh, is usually soluble in whatever solvents you're using to run your TLC, and therefore it will wash away uh, and one, it'll disappear. Two, it will interfere with your results. So uh, you want to use a pencil because the graphite from your pencil doesn't wash away like that. Now, we are going to draw our starting line using a ruler so it's nice and straight um, across the, a little bit from the bottom of our, our TLC plate. I'll turn it this way so you guys can, you know, so I don't uh, cover up with my hands too much. Now, notice that I've uh, put the starting line up a decent amount above the bottom of the plate, uh, but you'll see that it's not too close to the bottom, um, but also not too far up. You can see that I have selected a line, where I've drawn the line, so that it is above the level of the solvent in the chamber we're going to use. Uh, this is going to be the starting line where we spot our, our TLC spots. And we don't want them to start off inside that solvent. 
okay? Because then they'll just dissolve in the solvent and mix together inside the solvent, and you'll get no meaningful results. So you want your spots to start off above the level of the solvent you're going to use. Okay. When we spot this plate, we want to space out our spots so they don't run into each other or interfere with each other. Uh, so I'm going to spread out where I'm going to place my spots, and I'm going to label them in pencil. Now, um, generally when you do a TLC, you want to have spots for your standards, in this case aspirin, acetaminophen, and caffeine, uh, as well as spots for the drugs that we're testing. Now, if you were running this lab, you would probably pick three out of the five possible drugs we could test. I'm going to run all five drugs so that you could see what they look like. Um, but your lab instructor will probably assign three out of the five to you. Okay, but I'm going to mark all of these. Now, uh, again, the nice thing with a pencil is that the graphite doesn't wash away. I'm going to use this to help label uh, the TLC plate so that we can identify which spot is which. All right, so let's have a spot. You know, I'm going to use little hash marks here. And I'll spread them out, but basically I want to get, uh, looks like I'll need eight hash marks, three for my standards and um, five for the individual drugs. So again, if you were doing this, you would probably need only six. So let's try and space them out relatively evenly. So maybe having one there, one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so here's going to be my three standards on the left. So I'm going to have aspirin. As I'm writing very gently to avoid flaking off silica, uh, you want to be careful, uh, especially if your pencil is a little bit sharper. This one's a nice golf pencil that's not too sharp. But uh, you want to be careful about gouging out silica if you write too hard or uh, with too sharp a pencil. So uh, if you were doing this lab in person, I would recommend not using a mechanical pencil. Use a, uh, a um, regular wooden pencil like this one. All right. Uh, anyway, where was I? Aspirin acetaminophen and caffeine okay so I'm writing that very gently as you can see so I'm going to mark the five drugs as well on here um, so in addition to aspirin acetaminophen and caffeine we're also going to have um, you know place for our five drugs which I believe are anison which I'll label as Anna we have bufferin I'll label as BUF uh, I think we have uh, nodo, or let's see, I think Tylenol and nodos. So let's see, TY for Tylenol, ND for nodos, and EX for Excedrin. All right, so just so you can see that. That's basically how I've labeled out um, my spots for my TLC plate. Okay, so now I'm going to spot them accordingly. To spot my plate, I'm going to use what we call a micro cap. It's a very small, thin capillary tube. Um, so, due to their being very narrow, uh, they essentially um, suck up any solution you dip them into. So, uh, they just work by capillary action, hence the name. Now, when you're doing this lab, you want to use a separate micro cap for every material you're using. You do not want to cross contaminate your different solutions uh, because that'll mess up your results. Because again, you'll have a mixture of results and have instead of having things spread out as they should be. All right. Now over here, I've got my uh, three standards. So I've got aspirin, acetaminophen, and caffeine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take three different micro caps. Whoops, that there. Three different micro caps for the three different solutions I'm testing for my three different standards, and I will um, use those to spot uh, the. Um, oops, there we go. Let that adjust. Okay, so I'm going to use that to spot those three corresponding places on my TLC plate. So where I have my three standards on the left over there. 
Okay. okay, so when I put my capillary tube to the plate, I'll try and move my thumb out of the way so you guys can see this, I'm going to kind of put this sort of perpendicular to the plate. Now when it touches, it makes contact with this. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. There we go. There. Do you see how that spot formed? You want a spot that's about that size. You don't want something that's too big where the spots kind of bleed into each other. And you don't want something that's too small uh, where it might not show up. Okay, so that's about the size of spot that you want to put on your plate. Now, when we look at this under regular visible light, that's kind of hard to see. Um, we're going to look at this plate underneath a UV lamp and uh, this will be much more visible. All right. You'd also want to use the UV lamp for checking your practice plate uh, if you guys were doing this in person and you'd probably be practicing before using a nice big plate like this one. All right. I'm going to go ahead and spot the other truck. So there's a seat of one of them. Spot the back. Scoot that off to the side. And spot some caffeine as well. To spot the rest of our TLT plate, we need to make solution of the drugs we're going to test. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate this by uh, making a solution of anisin. So anisin tablets, the tablets look like this. Well, let's take out one of those anisin pills. Oops, I just need one of them. Now you're going to notice that uh, once you take out the tablets themselves, they're all kind of very similar. They're just like little white pills like this, uh, little white tablets rather. Uh, so you want to be careful about getting them mixed up. Uh, either label the uh, beakers you're using or um, if you're going to crush this, uh, put this on a piece of paper towel and just make sure you label the paper towel accordingly. Okay. Now, uh, to crush this into powder, um, I could use a mortar and pestle over here. Uh, though, to be honest with you, you probably only need just the pestle because uh, you could go ahead and crush this in your paper towel. Okay? Uh, be sure, this actually is probably a good way to also keep your, your pestle nice and clean, and you can use the same pestle for multiple things uh, and minimize cleaning it. Uh, so you want your... Uh, you want your tablet in this paper towel, and you're going to go ahead and start crushing it. This is the very therapeutic part of the lab. Crush it up. Okay. You can see that we have a nice white powder once we're done doing that. Okay. You want about a quarter of this powder uh, to wind up in your beaker to make your solution. All right. Um, I believe the Tylenol is the only one where you should use about an eighth of your tablet as opposed to a quarter of it. So we're going to go ahead and divvy up about, about there's half of that anyway. And then from that, we're going to take about a quarter of that. So this material here is what we want to wind up in our, our beaker, and we're going to add some solvent to it to turn it into the solution we need. I'm just going to crush this a little bit more just to make sure, make it a little bit easier to, um, to dissolve in our solvent. ahead and add this to our beaker.
in. So we've got about a quarter of our tablet there. We can get rid of the rest for now. And we want to add about two milliliters of ethanol and about two milliliters of Legroin to our beaker. Okay, so you can measure that out accordingly with uh, if the dropper you're using has uh, volume markings on it, you can use that. Um, or keep in mind that a drop is about uh, 0.05 milliliters. So if you want two milliliters, you would need about 40 drops or so, you know, give or take. Um, and so that might save you the hassle of trying to measure this out with a graduated cylinder. Uh, it doesn't have to be super duper precise. Uh, you want to be in that rough ballpark, but definitely don't. Uh, it's definitely a qual qualitative thing rather than a quantitative thing. So it doesn't have to be super duper precise. Be sure not to use the same dropper for the two different solvents. You don't want to contaminate droppers. You don't want to contaminate your bottles of solvent. Okay? So be very careful to avoid contamination in this lab because that can mess up your results, uh, especially if you contaminate, uh, mix together your different powders. You want to be careful not to get uh, one drug into your bottles of solvent. All right, let's get a milliliter. the second milliliter off of the All right, I'm going to swirl this together to let it uh, try and dissolve. Um, you know, it's not going to perfectly dissolve. I don't know if you guys can see that very well in there, but so we've got a few remnants, as you can see, that aren't, you know, completely dissolving. But enough of the powder should have gone into solution that uh, if we spot uh, this onto our TLT plate, some of that will wind up on our T TLT plate, uh, which is ultimately what you want. You don't need a very, very high concentration uh, for this stuff to show up on TLC, all right? So we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna spot uh, this anison on our TLT plate. I'm also gonna make solutions of our other four drugs and spot them as well. Alrighty. So you can see here I've made my um, my five uh, solutions of my various over-the-counter medications. Uh, you know, again, please be careful to avoid cross-contamination. Uh, notice I've used five different beakers for each of them. We're gonna use five different spotters for them. Uh, I was very careful to clean my uh, spatula and pestle and various things between making the different solutions. Because uh, again, if you don't want to have cross-contamination, it'll really mess up your results. So we're going to go ahead and take those five drugs and spot our TLT plate in the little notches that we designated for them. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. So here's our spot for Anison. Put that into solution. Be careful not to gouge out any of the uh, silica, but just gently dip that into the solution and tap it to the TLT plate, and you'll see a spot appear. I'm going to get a video of this with my phone so you can see this in a little bit better detail. I'm going to put the final spot of Excedrin on here. I'm just going to show you again, maybe from a top view, what this looks like. You want to have your TLC um, spotter go kind of straight down. So you can like kind of hold it perpendicular to the plate and go straight down onto that spot. Uh, you want it to wind up uh, at that crosshairs in between the starting line that we drew going from left to right and you know with the um, 
sort of hash mark that we've made marking, well, in this case, Excedrin. So let's go ahead and spot that. There we go. So you can see it kind of spotting right in the middle of that crosshairs over there. Okay, we are going across the hall to room 205. We're gonna keep it relatively dark in here. All right. Uh, and over here we have set up an apparatus with the um, with a UV lamp to help make it a little bit easier to read uh, what we're doing. So we have two UV lamps set up here so that, uh, you know, if we weren't in a pandemic, we could um, have two people working here at once. But um, the one on the left here is set up so that it's a little bit more sheltered, a little bit easier to read the... Um, for you to see the spots uh, without any ambient light filtering in. Uh, but for the sake of filming, I'm gonna use this setup over here. So we're going to uh, turn on our short wavelength. So I don't know if you can see that, but the uh, short wavelength over here is, um, that's the higher energy UV light, and that is what allows our spots to show up. So you can see that even though those spots weren't very visible um, under regular visible light, in ultraviolet light, they show up pretty well. Now, with your practice plate and even with your real plate here, you want to have a look at it under UV light like we're doing right now because you want to make sure that the spots look good. Uh, if your spots weren't properly on your starting line, if they were like way off, um, or if they were too small, or they were bleeding into each other, um, this would all be good reason to respot your plate or get a new plate, rather than wasting the time that it takes to develop an incorrect plate and find out that your results are a little messed up. So we're gonna go ahead and take this plate, it's looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and take this and uh, place it in our developmental chamber. Okay, we are ready to develop our, our TLC plate. So in here we have a uh, peanut butter jar that has a little bit of solvent. I think I showed this to you earlier when we were looking at where to mark our starting line on our TLC plate. Uh, so this uh, solvent is <laughs> basically a mixture of ethyl acetate and glacial acetic acid. Um, it's going to uh, rise up our TLC plate, and I'll show you a video of that as it happens. Um, and basically, we're going to let it rise up the plate, and when it gets to about, let's say, a, a, an inch or a couple centimeters from the top of the plate, uh, that's the point at which we can take our plate out and develop it. So, to develop our, our to uh, put our plate in, let's first open up the jar this parafilm that's uh, preventing any unnecessary evaporation. That. Now I'm going to open up the jar. Uh, what I recommend when you're opening up this jar to avoid sloshing around of the solvent, uh, hold the jar steady with one hand. So notice that I've braced one hand against the table here and holding the jar steady. So then I can open it up with my other hand. Okay, so depending on where whether you're right or left-handed, that can tell you you, know, you may have a preference in which hand you use to brace the jar, but accordingly do that. Now, when we, again, very gently holding our TLC plate, don't bend it, keep it like a, treat it like a gentle photograph, we're going to lower it into our TLC plate, uh, into our uh, chamber, I should say. And again, you want to be careful not to do this too quickly, not to slosh around any of your solvent, but have it set up over there like that. Now you'll notice, zipping that in, as soon as I do that, some of the solvent starts traveling up the plate. It's already moving, you know, relatively, well, relatively quickly. It's gonna start slowing down in a second. Now, to avoid too, too much of that solvent evaporating away, I'm going ahead and put that lid back onto the jar. I don't need to screw it on, just leave it, uh, you know, maybe like, very, like, don't need to screw it on all the way, but maybe gently put it a little bit on just in case. Uh, and we're just gonna let this settle and, you know, not disturb it for the next uh, few minutes. 
uh, just keep an eye on it from time to time and uh, see where that uh, solvent level is up the, uh, you know, as it's traveling up the plate. Now, if you're having trouble seeing that solvent level, one way to, to get a better view of it is to take the flashlight from your camera or from your phone and hold it behind the plate. Now, I don't know if you get some, oh, there we go. That's probably a good shot of it. You can see the different tone of where the solvent is and the dry parts of the plate. Okay, so, so basically keep an eye on how far the solvent level rise up the plate. Now, you don't have to keep holding this here. We can just check from time to time. Uh, so I'll leave this running and I'll do that check every now and then and we'll come back when the solvent level is about an inch or so or a couple centimeters from the top of the plate. Alrighty, it's been about 10 minutes and I don't know if you can see it from this angle. Let me try adjusting this. Actually there, now you should be able to see that. Uh, you can see that our level is, you know, pretty close to the top there. Uh, I'd say that's probably in that range we're looking for. It's about, uh, you know, a centimeter and a half to two centimeters from the top, uh, which is pretty far. We want that solvent to, to go as far as possible without actually reaching the top, uh, because that gets the spots to spread out a little bit more and makes this a lot easier to read. All right, so uh, go ahead and turn off my flashlight. Now again, very gently, hold this steady so we don't slosh any solvent around because that could again mess with our results. So we're gonna brace this jar with, with my hand against the table and then loosen the top and very gently pull out the TLC plate. Now, when I do this, as soon as I do this, I wanna be ready to mark that solvent line with a pencil. So let's mark that really quickly. There we go. So, now you can see that very well with this webcam, but there we go. So I've gone ahead and I've marked that solvent line with a pencil. Uh, it's very important you do that. You can already see that as the solvent starts evaporating, the dark uh, patch on the uh, on the TLT plates disappearing and you don't really see where that solvent line is anymore. So it already seems to be receding. Uh, so that's why you want to mark that with a pencil as soon as you pull this out of your chamber. Okay, it's, that uh, solvent line is going to be very important when we try to calculate RF values for our TLT plate. Okay, we have now placed the TLT plate under a UV lamp and you can already see that it looks very, very different from the way it looked earlier um, before we ran it through the solvent. So you can see that the spots have moved and the different materials have had the spots move different distances. Now, to make this TLC play a little bit easier to read uh, when we don't have a UV lamp, I'm going to take a pencil and draw circles, basically just uh, trace out the outlines of each of these spots. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, then we'll look at this under a regular lamp. Okay, here we have our TLC plate under normal lighting, uh, and you can see the circles uh, where I have traced the outline of our spots uh, in pencil. Now, if we look at our three spots on the left for aspirin, acetaminophen, and caffeine, those three initial spots, each only produced one spot that traveled different distances. All right, so uh, again, these three components are just pure substances. Uh, that's why only one spot shows up. Uh, the, their difference in solubility with the solvent is what causes uh, them to travel different distances up the plate. Okay, so uh, you know, caffeine doesn't dissolve very well in our solvent, uh, and so it sticks to the plate a little bit more and doesn't you know, travel all the way up with the solvent. Whereas aspirin does dissolve really well in our solvent and therefore travels almost as far as the solvent itself does. Okay, now um, let's look at our individual drugs, anisin, bufferin, Tylenol, Nodos, and Excedrin. Okay, so if we look at them, notice that each of our drugs has one or more spots 
And that co each of those spots correspond to the spots of the pure substances we're testing. So if you look at anison, for example, notice that it has one spot over here. Okay, you could call that spot number one. And it lines up with the spot for, for caffeine over here. Likewise, notice that we have a second spot, spot number two. And notice how it lines up with the spot for aspirin. Okay, so what does that tell you? Okay, well, both those materials are present in our anison tablet. Okay, so based on this information, you can interpret what's in each of your over-the-counter medications. Now, different TLC plates will have different distances the spot travels because there's different distances the solvent might travel, depending on, you know, how long you let it sit in the solvent and different factors tied into that. So a way to sort of standardize this so you can compare results with other people is to take what's called an RF value. Uh, to do that, we are going to measure the distance from the starting line to the center of a spot and then divide that distance in centimeters uh, by the distance that the, between the starting line and the solvent line all the way up here. Okay, so let's first measure that solvent line. So let's try and line that up so it's a little bit straighter. There we go. Okay, based on that, you should be able to tell how many centimeters is that solvent line. Okay, and with that in mind, let's measure the from the starting line to the center of each of our spots. So for our spot for aspirin, let's line that up. Our spot for aspirin to the center of that spot. Go ahead and measure that. Okay, so the center of that spot that show, is shown over there. Okay. For our acetaminophen, go ahead and measure to the center of that spot. For caffeine, go ahead and measure to the center of that spot. Okay, now here comes anison. So again, we have spot number one and spot number two. Okay, in your lab report, be sure to show your calculations for your RF value. So be sure to take the distance the spot travels divided by the distance the solvent travels accordingly. For bufferin, bufferin, so there's our spot for bufferin. Go ahead and measure the center of that spot, and how many centimeters that is. For Tylenol, there's also only one spot. So go ahead and measure to the center of that spot to get your distance that the spot travels. For nodos, Again, there is also only one spot for no dose, so we're going to measure to the center of that spot over there. And finally, for Excedrin, Excedrin has three different spots there, so we're going to measure to the center of all three of them. So for spot number one, measure to the center of that spot. For spot number two, and for spot number three, right, you know, one on top of the other, go ahead and measure to the center of those spots. Okay, and of course, don't forget to divide by the distance your solvent traveled to get the RF value. Uh, RF itself is not, uh, is, is unitless. It doesn't have any units because you're taking your distance your spot traveled in centimeters, you're divided by your distance your, your solvent travels also in centimeters, and centimeters and centimeters cancel each other out. Uh, so you're going to wind up with a decimal that is uh, unitless. Okay, it's going to be a decimal because the distance the solvent traveled is always a higher number, 
oh, sorry, I should say that it's a decimal that's less than one. It'll be zero point something. Uh, and again, this is because your solvent always travels a further distance than your spot does. Um, so yeah, you, you could give your answer to uh, the nearest, uh, you know, 10th place, you know, so uh, since your uh, centimeters, um, oh, sorry, actually, since we're doing a division, it would actually be uh, to two significant figures since uh, each of your uh, centimeter measurements would be to one decimal place or would have two significant figures. Anyway, um, you can sort that out and um, you know, figure that out accordingly, but we'll go from there. All right, I'm just going to walk you through the lab report really briefly, just so you're aware of how the stuff needs to get entered. So I'm going to skip through all our directions here. All right, so when you get to page 41, you can see the actual uh, first page of the lab report itself. Um, so please note that normally if you were doing this in person, you would uh, tape your actual TLC plate here, or you would draw a sketch of your TLC plate. Uh, I realize that some of you guys are doing this, um, you know, if, since we're doing this remotely, you're trying to, uh, you know, draw this on a computer and it might not be as practical to do a drawing here. Uh, so, so don't stress too much about this. If you're doing this in person, um, I would recommend trying to sketch your plate here. Um, but since we're all using the same videos, I think uh, it's, it's okay if we, we skip this part here. All right. But what I want you to do then is to show me your RF calculations for all of the spots. Okay, so uh, basically for the three standards that we test on the left of our TLC plate, we have aspirin, acetaminophen, and caffeine. So you want to show me the calculation that's involved in calculating the RF values for those three spots. Okay, so for your aspirin spot, you want to write down the distance the spot itself traveled. Uh, and then you can use a slash or a divided by sign and the distance the solvent traveled. Okay, and this will give us the RF value over here. Okay, so you'd give that answer to, you know, to one or two decimal places, uh, whatever is appropriate. Okay, and then you do that, repeat that for acetaminophen and caffeine. Uh, ignore this line about ibuprofen. We, we obviously didn't use that for this experiment. On the next page, we have a table for uh, showing the spots that came from the over-counted medications that, uh, that we did in the lab, that we used in the lab. So uh, you would l write out the names of our five products, okay? Or depending on if your instructor only has you uh, do a few of those products, you can use that appropriately. But uh, for my students, I want you to write out all five. So uh, for the fifth one, you can do it in the space underneath the table accordingly. All right. Uh, feel free to extend these this table, or just write underneath here specifically. But based on the number of spots that your drug produces, you want to show those RF calculations, just like we did on the previous page with our standards. Uh, you want to take the distance the spot traveled divided by the distance the solvent traveled, and then you know in addition to writing out those numbers, write out what that calculation equals. What is that RF value? Okay. Now, depending on how many spots you have, uh, you may or may not use all of these. Uh, to be honest with you, you know, we, we see a maximum of three spots, I think with Excedrin. So, so this last column over here is just going to be blank. Okay. You don't actually have to fill that out. Now, in this table over here, this is where you want to uh, put in the actual interpretation of what this previous the previous two tables tell you. Okay, you can kind of do this stuff qualitatively just by looking at your TLC plate, uh, but basically, you want to say uh, the name of each of those five drugs that we tested. Okay, or however many your instructor has you test. Um, so the same list that you have over here in the previous column, you're going to write that down here. Okay, the same ones here. And next to them, you're going to say which of those three components, aspirin, acetaminophen, or caffeine, uh, things we saw in the previous table, which of these three are present in those individual drugs. Okay, so this will correspond to the spots that we see here in this table. 
Okay, to give you a random example, let's say you have anisin. Okay, now with anisin, you would have seen two spots, right? Um, and you'd get RF values for them. Which of those, uh, which of the three standards correspond to spot number one? Okay, which RF value matches the RF value of spot number one for anisin? Write that component over here. For spot number two, which uh, of the three components matches with the RF value of spot number two? Also write that component here. Okay, so the two spots in anison should have the two components of anison written over here. Okay, and that's how you would then fill out the table accordingly for each of the over-the-counter medications. And finally, uh, you should do the questions and problems uh, for this section. Uh, these are tied into the lab, so, uh, so sometimes I tell some of my students that you know, the questions and problems are just kind of, um, you know, just extra practice and, you know, depending on the situation, I may or may not grade them. Uh, in this case, I do want you to do the questions and problems uh, because they do tie directly to the lab. All right, so I'm just going to walk you through them. So in this first question, you want to explain the logic used to identify the components of the over-the-counter drugs you analyzed. Um, please don't write a huge paragraph on this. You could probably explain this within a couple of lines. Uh, a couple of sentences. Uh, basically, I want you to point out uh, how we're able to, you know, distinguish between the um, the different uh, components of the drug. So basically, what was used to kind of separate out the components, and how do we connect them with the you know, identity of the individual component. So aspirin, acetaminophen, caffeine, how do we, you know, identify or connect the pure substances with the components of our drugs? Okay, so describe that in your own words, but that's kind of what I want you to tackle, just those kind of two points, okay? Um, was TLC a good method for determining the presence of caffeine uh, analgesics in OTC products? pros and or cons. Uh, to be honest with you, you could, uh, you could have pros and cons for this. So uh, if, if it's easier to write this out in point form, I'm okay with that. Um, you know, uh, to be honest, there is one uh, major con to this, uh, probably quite a few pros to this, but uh, one major con, um, and I'm kind of curious to see if you guys can identify it. Okay. Uh, it's basically, it's not, you know, it's it's more like a shortcoming. It's not that it's bad. It's just that it's something that this method can't be used for, right? It can tell you a lot of information, but there's something it can't tell you. Uh, so yeah, so go ahead and you know make a pros and cons list for this. Questions three and four are kind of similar. Um, basically, they're asking uh, questions about the RF values of uh, the three standards we use. So please only talk about. Uh, just limit your answers to the three standards, aspirin, acetaminophen, or caffeine. Okay, please don't, you know, reference any of the the mixtures, the drugs that we use in this in this lab. Uh, it's probably simpler if you just refer to, to one of those three substances. Okay, so which of those has the largest RF value and account for this, and which one has the smallest RF value and account for it? And I think figuring out which one has the largest or smallest RF one is pretty easy if you just go to the you know, the table over on page 41. But the account for this, I think, is where, um, you know, uh, people kind of uh, give a really unsatisfactory answer. So when they say account for this, uh, you're trying to say like, oh, this, you know, this substance has the largest RF value. Don't say that the reason for this is that it traveled the furthest. Like, yes, obviously that's why the RF value is the largest number why did it travel the furthest? What is it about that substance that caused it to travel up the plate further? All right, and I may have alluded to it at some point in my video. Um, so, and, and then you can answer question four in a very similar vein, okay? Uh, with question, question five, uh, basically it's referencing the separation of Excedrin specifically, but really it's, um, you know, the separation of any of those uh, those mixtures. Uh, is that a chemical change or a physical change? And uh, the way I phrase that probably will give that away a little bit. Uh, so think back to, to what we covered in chapter two and think about what uh, separation of mixtures references. Okay. Um, and then finally, for the last one, uh, 
basically the question says that a student extracts caffeine from a coffee bean and you know and then they also synthesize caffeine in a lab and they run TLCs of this what would would you get the same results for both okay now when they say why or why not there's actually a way to argue for both these answers uh, to argue the answer for you know the yes answer like these two results would be the same is probably simpler uh, some people like to be contrarian and, and argue for the opposite and say like well they're going to be different and why um, it's possible to, to argue against it and say that they are going to be different uh, if you're going to do that you're going to have to argue from the standpoint of impurities uh, basically you know stating that the um, you know when you extract a sample of caffeine from a coffee bean you know there's other stuff in the coffee bean that might show up in your results when you synthesize caffeine in a lab you get byproducts in those synthetic steps those might show up in your results you know uh, so really it's like you just have different impurities that might show up in your results and that's how your results are different um, I mean that that's a legitimate argument but I think it's probably more straightforward here to explain why they are the same okay so I think ignoring impurities what is it about the you know why would the results why would the spot for caffeine show up on the same place of uh, a same point on your TLC plate whether it is you know caffeine from a coffee bean or caffeine that was made in lab all right okay and then that's it for this lab so um, you know if you have any questions please let me know and uh, yeah good luck